the pro-life legislation that you're referring to that is quote unquote incremental or gradual is legislation written by pro-life legislators and the pro-life lobby and establishment that is via permission. It is definitionally writing into law partiality and unequal weights and measures. Welcome to Barry and Babs. I'm your host, Vali Chikuni. Today, we'll be uh, just reviewing a little bit of the debate that transpired between Jeff Debin and Sami Say and Brother Virgil Walker. Without further ado, I present to you Mr. Sami Say himself. Here we go. I think that's a bit wrong. But you know, think, I, I know that's a good sir, point. I, I, if, go I, if I may ask, yeah, yeah, if I may ask this yeah, question. Yeah. So, would you support... If, if pro-lifers were to support, were to, um, were to introduce a bill that would ban all abortion, that would, um, again, just, just bear me here, ban all abortion, would penalize women, would penalize anybody involved with the abortion, right? But they would not, um, 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 but the death penalty would not be included. Would you support it? Yeah, so that's actually, that's a great question. It's an important question because that's actually the, the state of things across the country. We have to contend with that, that there are certain states that do have capital punishment, which, you know, what does scripture say about taking the life of another person is that the civil magistrate wields the sword of justice. And in those cases, the right, uh, the right way to deal with the penology of murder is essentially capital punishment. We, well, of course, we should believe that as Christians. But uh, in some states across the union, we don't have capital punishment. And in some states, I would say their standards of witnesses and evidence are not even good enough right now to trust them with that. However, however, there's a difference in terms of when we talk about abolition, there's a difference between the definition of something as a crime and then the question of penology. Uh, scripture, the law of God deals with things as defined as a crime, things that are, and you know this, things that are called sins, but they're not crimes, and then things that are sins and crimes. And then the scriptures give you the penology, the penalty for if they do this, here's the case law examples of how you deal with those particular crimes. And then sometimes like even with like theft, there's different ways of managing the issue of theft with penology like there's there's a personal theft and then there's a business theft and the penology for that is different so but my point is this in scripture you've got something as crime and then you've got to deal with penology what we're saying as abolitionists when you go into a state to get legislation and to provide equal protection you have to we are trying to deal with something as how does god define this it needs to be the crime of murder it needs to be equal protection that other category of penology is a separate category that we also yes have to work in but those are two different categories penology but versus making it a crime in that category and being consistent. But um, if I if I understand you correct, sir, with the game, with all due respect, I think, that's, I think that's a bit of a convenient way to separate the issue. Because, so for example, um, let's let's to, let's make it a um, issue of of the states, right? So you've mentioned that some states have um, death penalties and some do not. So let's let's suppose this is a state where. Okay, so this was a very interesting debate, but I think there there was a misunderstanding that this gentleman were having. The following day, Jeff was able to clean it up. I, Sam is missing the point. There's two things at play over here. Okay, there are certain things that are definitely a crime, but they are not. It's not a sin, and vice versa, right? So, for example, if if I'm gossiping, right, that is a sin. Nobody is going to arrest me for gossiping. Okay, that's a sin. Now, when we talk about uh, if you or if you you know if you slander somebody, right, you bear false witness. That is a crime, and that is a sin. So you can, you know, somebody can bring charges against you on those things, right? There's differences right there. When it comes to murder, right, like, you know, it's a crime as well as a sin. So when people are legislating this issue, like, okay, we want to uh, legislate that we should stop deleting children. You can vote and pass that bill. After that, what is the punishment for people who delete children? Biblically speaking, if you delete children, you are supposed to also to be deleted as well. Okay, so now we can go in the realm where we're arguing like, okay, so why are you putting people for life uh, imprisonment? Okay, they are still, you know, uh, people are feeding them. The same people that you killed, the same people who are feeding them in these prisons, right, is uh, like in these jails. So I think there was a misunderstanding that they had uh, in that regard. So, you know, I don't know why there was uh, a confusion. There's things that we just take for granted that we just assume that people might understand these things or they might not. So that's also one thing that I did notice. So let's listen a little bit with what um, 
how he shared uh, his point, okay? And we continue. It does have the capital punishment for murders, right? Yeah. First degree murder, yeah. In this case, would you support, and then, this, and then a, a uh, the pro-life lobby introduces a bill, same scenario as I mentioned before, but would not penalize, um, but would not have the penalty for the woman. Would you support it? Well, it wouldn't happen because their worldview doesn't allow for it to happen, but let's yeah, but imagine, come, come let's, imagine <laughs> let's imagine that, that they would, and they won't because it's not their worldview. Imagine that they were in the state of Arizona going to make it a crime and afford equal protection so that everyone was punished for the murder of the child, I would absolutely support that. Um, and, and, and again, the issue but, of penology is, a, is, is, but, is, 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 and this is the thing, you said it was convenient. I don't think, Sam, it's, it's a matter of convenience. That's how the Bible does it. It deals with something yeah, but, as a crime, and then it deals with the penology. Let me, but let me explain why I think it's convenient, because abolitionists have framed this issue, of, you, you mentioned yourself before about justice and injustice, yeah. right? You've mentioned that you don't believe in regular, you know, you don't believe in incremental policies because you believe it's regulating abortion, right? You believe it's partiality. Yeah, it's partiality, right? it is. So, yeah, so, so well, we disagree we can talk about that um, uh, next but i think um the so when you frame it as issue of justice and issue of of injustice right we're talking about what is honorable to god if a murderer murder if a murderer murders a baby right and there isn't a uh, and then there is a bill that would not that would not have true justice for that crime right right if a life for a life if we're not going to support that then that is in that's inherently unjust it's unjust so i think for it is the issue the abolitionists i know there's some abolitionists who i think are much more uh consistent on this issue who say no they would not support it and they're being consistent now they're wrong I but think they're, they're being. I think they're being biblically think, inconsistent because Scripture deals with those two things as categories. There's something defined as a crime, and penology is something that's that's dealt with in a number of different cases in yeah, case law again, examples. And so, penology is one thing how it's how it's actually punished. Uh, the the question of whether or not it's a crime, or what kind of crime is it, is is a, is a separate question. And so, what what would be right is in the category of definition and justice. Take the life of a human being in the womb willfully. Um, you are murdering that child you are guilty of murder. That's one category. And the other category is, well, how do you deal with murder? And here's the deal. Look, again, we can say convenience, but scripture does give you examples of differing degrees of murder and how you deal with that. So it'll call something, you should not murder. And this is murder, right? And that's a yeah, crime. But, yeah, but oh, sir. Oh, hold on. So you call it crime and that's murder. And then there's categories and case law examples. Okay, what kind of murder was it? And how do you punish those differing degrees or accidental death, manslaughter, those sorts of things. And again, even with theft, you should not steal. It's a crime to steal. But then it gives you the category of penology dealing with, okay, well, how do you deal with the different ways someone steals? So what I'm saying is that what we have to focus on as abolitionists is what you already agree with. We need to provide equal protection for all human beings from fertilization, and it doesn't matter who does it, anybody engaged in it is guilty. And my point there yeah. is the pro-life establishment doesn't agree with you. Yeah, but sir, the, you know, you've mentioned again that, um, that we agree that a life that, that if you if you kill the preborn child, there's no difference between that and killing a five year old child. That's right. Right. So so it's not a comparison. I didn't mention there's, there's different penalties for different crimes. That's true. But there but killing a preborn child and killing a five year old is the exact same crime. So again, if this is an issue of justice, right, of honoring God above all, we don't want to sin. We don't want to introduce a bill that would dishonor God. We don't want to support a bill that would dishonor God. But if you're going to support a bill that would say, right, we're not going to get the death penalty in a state that supports the death penalty. To, which would be just. That is how it's supposed to be, right? If you murder a child, whether it's a five-year-old or pre-born baby, they should be penalized for that. Some abolitionists are consistent and they say, well, in light of that, they will not support any bill that does not have that as part of its bill. But you're saying that you would from what you're saying, you would support an unjust bill no. because, but, no. but, but sir, if, is, I, I think you're misunderstanding how the law works in this country. That's that's the problem. Um, well, <laughs> and what, I, what I mean by that, I, what I mean, and, I, I, and that's for, I'm maybe because you're from, maybe it's yes, I think there was a misunderstanding uh, in how they communicated over there. Okay, any bill that's going to be put on the floor, if it's not consistent with what the scripture teaches, then if you're a Christian, in order for you to be consistent, you cannot vote for that bill in good conscience. There's people who are Christians, they're going to vote for it uh, out of, uh, that's just pragmatism, okay? This is just what works, or we think like, oh, if I don't vote for this thing, it's not going to work. So they are speaking past each other, because like Jeff is separating the thing, okay? Uh, penology is separate from the bill. When they put on the floor, the uh, you know, we want people to stop deleting babies, right? So you are just voting for that. We're going to vote, no not deleting babies, or yes, deleting babies. And then you'll be like, oh, so what is the crime? What is the punishment for people who do these things? I mean, it was kind of like frustrating because they kept going round and round and round. They were just misunderstanding each other. I do not understand why. 
But uh, there's a good part that's coming out over here. So let's uh, listen some more. Canada. No, <laughs> um, <laughs> but, no, but, but what I mean by that is, is in each state. I can get to that. Sure. Well, I'll, get to that. I'll answer that, though. Real, real brief, though, I'll answer that. So when you go into a state and you write this legislation, and we've done this enough. I would say, look, we are, we hate that some babies, right, that some babies do not have the protection that others would. That we hate that this is prioritizing some babies over others. We hate that. We are still going to rejoice that some babies are being saved. Because one thing that I think abolitionists forget about is that you know, is that when the Bible says rescue those be taken to the slaughter, it does address laws, but not just that as well, right? It's not, just, it's, not, it's not just addressing the ideal perfect bill. I'm glad that some babies are being rescued because the reality is this, when it comes to the uh, abolition or when it comes to incrementalism or, or immediatism, worst case scenario with immediatism, no babies get saved. Best Worst case scenario with incrementalism, some babies get saved. So since Roe v. Wade, there have been 32,000 babies that, uh, annually that has been that have been saved um, in America. Now, I know some of us will try to dispute this, but this is really just indisputable. This is uh, There's a study that came out from, I forget the school, the school in the U.S., that said that birth the, that the uh, birth rates have gone up by 2.3%, mostly dealing with women uh, who are in college, 20 to 24-year-olds, all right, and that there are now 32 more babies being born than before. And they, this is a circular organization that say it's clearly because of these bills, right? So clearly, even though unfortunately this is not enough and 32 babies being saved while it's fantastic again it should be no baby should be killed because of abortion right but the, re the reality is i rejoice that while these bills are imperfect while these bills are not on their own enough while i i'm going to speak against the reality of some babies being killed i'm still going to support these bills if it's the best we can offer if it's the best we can do for example like the heartbeat bill i would support that not, like you when it came to the bill that i uh, that i shared not because i completely support everything in there but because i'm glad that at least it's going to save some babies and i think again i think you have a more convenient argument for yourself but i think when it comes to the incrementalist, you only identify no. the the imp the imperfections there instead of also addressing the fact that some babies are being are being saved, and I rejoice in that. Okay, all right. So um, not okay. So this is <laughs> so this is the crux of the matter. Okay, this is where the point is at. Some position is as long as some babies are being saved, he's going to rejoice in that, right? You're saving, uh, you know, rescue those who are. Um, who are being put to the slaughter. The point that he's missing, right, if you're supporting these incrementalism bills, right, the heartbeat bills, right, you are saying that, uh, for example, like 15 weeks in Florida, right, at 10 weeks, it's illegal for you to do whatever you want to do in Florida. Five weeks, one week, two weeks, right, you can do whatever you want because the law starts at 15 weeks. So anything else that you do prior to 15 weeks, it's par for the course. You cannot support that biblically speaking. Why? Because life begins a conception. So at any time that somebody has put this, um, you know, whatever law they want to put in, right? It's an unjust. So you cannot vote for that and thinking that whatever you're doing is good. Okay. So we have this idea like, oh, okay. So long as some are being saved, but some are being saved at the expense of some that are being killed. It just doesn't make any sense. It does not make any sense. Like, if you think it through, you cannot arrive at that conclusion. Okay, you cannot arrive at that conclusion. So, even though some is saying that he he's going to rejoice that some, are, uh, you know, some babies are getting saved, what about the ones who are not getting saved? So, if if you're speaking against that, but you're voting for that, okay, my vote is for people uh, for babies at 15 weeks, right? By you voting for that implications is at 10 weeks at five weeks at one week it, it's open season so this is the idea of like okay you might think that's not what you're doing but that's exactly what you're doing biblically speaking okay so uh here's a scripture that i want to share okay isaiah 10 1 right war to those who decree iniquitous decrees and the writers who keep writing oppression to turn aside the needy from justice so this is exactly what's happening Okay, so you are, these people are writing a law that is uh, that is an abomination to God, saying that we're going to save babies at 15 weeks, but we're not going to save babies at 10, at 5, or whatsoever. You are already operating outside the biblical worldview. You cannot defend that, that under any circumstances. And then if you cast your vote that promotes that iniquitous decree, you are not innocent either. Another scripture that I want to share with you, okay, the implications of this issue, right? Mark, uh, Mark 7, 6, okay? 
and this is Jesus speaking, right? Why did Isaiah prophesy of you, hypocrites, as it is written? These people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. What, um, what is the point that I'm trying to drive home? You are saying with your lip that I'm going to speak against the other babies who are being killed prior to six weeks, prior to 15 weeks, right? You're speaking, but your action is voting for the 15 weeks. You see what I'm saying? That's what's happening. So it doesn't matter what you think. It doesn't matter how you say, right? It doesn't matter about your intentions. He went on to say like, oh, you know, so long as your intentions are good, guys, you can have the good intentions, but you are not the standard. The word of God is the standard. What happened to Uzzah? Okay. Uzzah was trying to, uh, to prevent the ark from hitting the floor. And what happened to him? He died instantly. Why? Because God had already given um, the commands on how the ark is supposed to be transported, who is supposed to be handling the ark. So this is during David's time. They, they, they became um, uh, innovative <laughs> on how to transport the ark, and it costed Uzzah's life. So this idea of like, okay, we just want to save some babies, and we're going to vote for this bill. We are doing the same thing that Oza was, was doing. And you're voting for this, oh, this is what works. And this is, that's pragmatism, okay? That's not biblical. And if you're voting for 15 weeks, that's partiality. Because you're willing to save the 15 weeks baby, but you're not willing to save the 10 weeks baby and the 15 weeks baby, even though you're not saying that. But your action has that implications. And so, so what? They said, no, you cannot be participating in that. You shouldn't vote for that bill. And you shouldn't vote for that bill and the implications just like, yeah, but then all the babies are going to be killed. Yes, all babies are going to be killed. But guess what? Your hands are going to be clean. God is not going to judge you for being like, oh, how come you never voted for 15, for 15 weeks, right? Because you said, no, Lord, according to your word, life begins at a conception. So why would I say all of a sudden I'm voting for 15 weeks? No, God is not going to judge you for that. If anything, you vote for 15 weeks, God is going to judge you for 15 weeks because God has already spoken, right? And he's not going to contradict himself. Life begins at conception. Anything else that people are improvising for the sake of expediency, for the sake of pragmatism, for the sake of like, oh, there is no way abolitionism is going to work, right? Like, live, that's God's business. That's not your business. Our business is to honor him. Our business is to to be faithful. Our business is to follow his word. So even if all those babies surely get killed, so be it. Your hands are clean because you never voted for that issue. Okay. Now, the fact that we babies are being killed like this, right, in the land and everything else, it shows that things went wrong uh, prior to where we are right here. So we need to check what happened. How did we get here? You see what I'm saying? So those are the things that are going to make like, okay, you know, our hands are getting dirty, right? We are voting these lawmakers, okay, who do not honor God at all, but they are the ones who are ruling us. What do we expect for them to do? It's exactly these things are going to happen. So I did not understand, like, you know, Sam says he's going to rejoice that some babies are being saved at what expense? At what cost? How can you defend that biblically speaking? You can't. You can't. Okay? All babies are being put to slaughter. The 10 weeks, the 15 weeks, the 5 weeks, they are all being, uh, they, they are all put to, uh, to a slaughter. But you are just okay that, oh, at least the 15 weeks are fine. That's just what, that's just the bottom line. That's how it comes down to it, okay? But uh, it was a very, very uh, interesting debate that I encourage everyone to be sure to watch it, okay? So let's just watch a little bit, and then we're going to go to uh, Virgil Walker. Biblical categories of definitions of something as a crime versus penology, and I think that you, you have to contend with that. So you said a lot there. I'll do my best. I want to make sure you got a chance to say all that. But when you tried to compare your, uh, your uh, scenario of uh, it's a crime for everybody, it's equal protection, but the category of penology, the mother will be shown partiality over here. When you tried to compare my saying, I would speak prophetically against that, and I would call it partiality, I would call it an abomination, I would call it sin. When you try to compare that scenario to the incremental type legislation that is by permission of the pro-life legis uh, legislators and the pro-life movement, Movement, I think you're, you're engaging in a, in a very, very serious category error because the pro-life legislation that you're referring to that is quote-unquote incremental or gradual is legislation written by pro-life legislators and the pro-life lobby and establishment that is via permission. It is definitionally writing into law partiality and unequal weights and measures. I'll give you the example, uh, the, some examples. So, 
in Arizona, we put our bill. Okay, so yes, these are t before I didn't believe it that the pro lifers are the ones who are doing everything in their power not to advance or not to advance abolitionism, not to advance truly the pro life position. So now it's almost. You know, it should just be pro-life. It should it should just be fine. But they just sound as pro-choice, and those are the things that they're doing. They're just pro-choice, disguised as pro-life. So hence, <laughs> abolitionism. And quite honest, that is actually a very consistent position, biblically speaking. Biblically speaking. That the only opportunity I have to give some babies legal rights is to introduce a, uh, a pro-life bill that would be like a heartbeat bill or something like that. That is not partiality because of my intention. Now, let me explain why this is very important to, 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 uh, to understand. Let's look at, for example, in Israel, right? You have Israel and Hamas right now, uh, obviously, with what's going on. Israel um, has uh, 52, sorry, 252 of its, um, of its citizens. Okay, I want to get that. Sam says, if he supports the bill because of his intentions, uh, guys... The heart is desperate, wicked, above all else, who can know it? It's not about your intentions. Like I said, it's not about your intentions. You might have good intentions, according to you. Absolutely true. I grant that. But your intentions must conform to the scriptures. If your, your intentions cannot supersede the scripture, okay? Your intentions must come under the scripture. The Bible says life begins at conception. Your intention is to save babies and then you're allowing that babies should be killed up until 15 weeks. But your intention is to save all the rest of the babies, but you're voting for babies to be killed before 15 weeks. Hello? Hello? So let's uh, listen in. This is very interesting. Um, right now uh, in hostage um, um, uh, by, by Hamas. They just recently have been able to rescue 112 of the, of, the, um, of, the, uh, of the hostages. Almost all of them are children. And I th actually, I think all of them are children and women. And it's been very obvious that they've been prioritizing the women and the children. Is that partiality? Explain that a little further. I'm trying to make the connection you just made to what okay. you just said. Okay. So, okay. So in Israel, right, and mm -hmm. in Hamas issue, right, mm -hmm. Israel has, um, uh, so Hamas has, uh, has uh, 252 uh, Israelis, um, you know, in hostage. Mm -hmm. Israel has negotiated for the uh, rescue of 112 of the uh, hostages. Mm -hmm. Almost all of them are children and um, and and um, and women. This is because they're they're trying to. They've been prioritizing those people because they they recognize that those people are easier to rescue than the men. Is that partiality? Now, to get another category, Eric, you're talking about a situation where you have the preservation of human life happening and the understood worldview. All right, so <laughs> yes, kind of another category. Error. I don't understand how Sam <laughs> find himself in this situation. Okay, so Israel, right? Uh, do you think that Israel was not negotiating that all of them should be released? Okay, the people who are committing partiality in this case would be Hamas because they are the ones who are one. They are the ones who are holding the hostages. Two, they are the ones who are, you know, letting Israel have, you know, whatever, okay, have women and children, but the rest should, uh, you know, the rest are, are, are remaining there, okay? That's number one. And number two, these are hostages, okay? These are hostages. These are already human beings who are alive and well today. Uh, they are alive. They are not dead. They are alive. They are not dead. So the government has a responsibility to protect its citizens, Okay, so the government is not being charged for partiality. Individuals are the ones who are going to be charged for exercising, exercising partiality. So you cannot accuse um, Israel of exercising partiality for releasing women <laughs> and children, right? Even the scripture says, like, you know, we are to take, even for him, right? The least of these, right? So amongst men, women, and children, who are the least? It's men, it's women, and children. <laughs> They are the least. So, yes, you are going to prioritize the least among, you know, uh, among the people who are there. So, yes, it's going to be children uh, and women. They are the least. So, it's just like, to me, I'm like, okay, so how did you get to that issue? Okay. Hamas is the one who is committing partiality in that situation. I can grant you that. Israel is trying to get its citizens, but Hamas is holding them hostages. So, the least of these 
amongst the people who are being uh, held as hostages are women and children. Yes, they're going to take, so they will have a, a priority among men. That's not partiality. The Bible speaks to, to, to such as well. Right, men are to sacrifice for their for their families. Right, men are to sacrifice for their wife. Men are to sacrifice for their family. So, if a man is sacrificing for his family, is that is that partiality? Men's responsibility is to the wife. Right, that's a priority. Is that a partiality to the children? No, it's not a partiality to the children. Why? Everything in category. Right, men like you know as a husband, your priority is your wife, not your children. You see what I'm saying? So if a man is prioritizing his wife, he's not in sin, and that's not partiality, because that's the order of things. You're just following how things are supposed to be done. So I didn't understand how we ended up uh, in in Gaza in that in in that situation. So on that one, no, Sam, I don't think it was a very good example that you gave. But I would say, nice try, Sam, nice try. <laughs> Yeah, but it was a very interesting debate. I encourage you guys to uh, to definitely check it out, okay? You were right on Virgil. He was inconsistent, okay? And Jeff, I think there was a, quite a misunderstanding that you two had. He did present a position that was inconsistent to his position. And, you know, he said he was tired and everything. But the following day, he was able to clean it up because I was just like, okay, I was also confused. No, if a law is unjust, it's not going to get it. It's not going to be. Nobody's going to vote for that issue if you're going to be consistent. Okay. Penology is sure. Definitely something different. Okay. So if you're voting for abolition, you're voting for abolition from conception. And there is no, um, there's no middle ground on that issue. There's no middle ground on that issue. So if they bring a bill, that's going to be like, okay, we can save babies starting from one week and above. You still cannot vote for that issue. Why it's not consistent according to the scripture? It has to be from conception. That's it. So whether this thing is going to be resolved 10 years from now, 50 years from now, even if it doesn't get resolved till Jesus comes, you are consistent according to the scripture. God is not going to judge you for that issue. But if you're participating in those things, eh? You will have to answer to him. But I'm interested to know what you guys think about this whole thing. I thought it was a very interesting debate. Until next time, remember to be in the now. Thank you.